So in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create a quick um, insert to a table using an array. So we're going to start by creating a new variable. We're going to create a hobbies array. So this is a variable of type array. Then we're going to add fields. So we're going to give the name of the hobby. And we have another field, which is how many years you've been doing the hobby. So add a number. So this is basically our array. Now in our page, we want to allow people to add hobbies that they have. So to do that, we're going to add a couple of buttons. Um, we'll add one button here. This would be our add button. And then we can add another button over here. This would be used for saving the data. Now to show the editable table, what we're going to do is we're going to use a for each component. So we're going to pick a for each, bring it over here. And inside the for each, we're going to have a grid. And inside the grid, we're going to have a couple of input text components. So we're going to put one over here can resize it a little bit and we'll put another one over here. So this one would be, for example, the name of the hobby. And this would be the number of fields, like that. So again, you can resize and play along with this. Now, this all sits inside a for each, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to connect the for each to our array, so to the hobbies array. So right now we don't have any thing in the array, therefore we don't see any of the fields. So we need to use the add button to add a new record. So we're going to add a new event on the button. And in here we're going to use an assign variable. In the assign variable, we're going to assign an empty value into here. So if we, for example, want to uh, put a hobby like that, and this would put in this value inside this field. Now, one thing to note is on the array, we're using reset to none, which means every time that we click, we add another value into here. All right, so uh, we actually don't want to put hobby, we want to keep it empty, so we're gonna sign it like this and click save. All right, so now let's see how this works so far. Switch to live, click the add button and we get one record, click and you get another record. Cool, so we now have the records being added. Now we need to connect this to the actual values in the array. So this field, the value in here is going to be whatever we have in the hobbies in the name. Now we don't want it to be the zero record, we want it to be whatever the current index is. So we're going to use current.index here. No, and current.index with the dollar sign in front of it, that's something that you're getting because you're inside a for each, right? So again, we're going to do the same thing over here for the years. And again, assign it to dollar current index, like that. All right, so now we should be in a state where we can basically put in values. Now, the last point is clicking the Save button should actually save the data. Now, this is up to you what to do here. I'm going to do um, an action chain on this button in the Save. And in my case, I'm just going to call a little JavaScript function. Okay, and I'm going to create a function and we'll call it print array. Okay. It's going to get one variable, which is the array. So let's move and assign the hobbies array over here. And remember, inside the hobbies, we have name and years. And then you can do something inside this function. So again, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to just do a console.log. Um, we have the values. Okay. And then we're going to use a for each loop. So let's pick up a for each structure. And we're going to run on i, arg one length. That's the length of the array. And what we're going to do is for each row, we're going to do a console.log. 
and we're gonna print the values. So, uh, hobby. And this would be the alg1 dot, um, sorry, i dot name. And we can then do plus use plus, and again, alg1 is the same i, and this time print the use. All right, so this should be all that we need to do. Um, again, in the save, you can do something else instead of this functionality. Now we can run our little application. We're going to open the console so we can see our message when we click save. Sorry. Clear it here. So let's add a couple of hobbies. So let's say we went fishing for the past um, six years and then we did roller skate and this is only in the last couple of years and then when you click save you can see we have the values and we get the information about the hobbies and deals so this is a very simple way for you to create kind of an editable table where people can add values dynamically um, when you're working with visual builder you one more thing here which is what happens if i want to actually catch the event of modifying the value in this field so i want to have an event on this field and i need to pass in the value of what we get here so to do that on this field i'm going to add a new value change event okay and you can see i'm getting the value uh, over here so this is the value from this field. But if, what if I want some other thing from the same record? What if I need the year? So I can add another variable here. We'll pass in the year. This would be a number. Okay. And then we want to use those two things. So for example, we can use them in a file notification. So we'll do value changed. And in the message here, we can have the value and also whatever is in the year. Okay, so this would be an information transient message. All right, so then the one thing we need to do is, again, when we click and we have this field here, we need to pass in both the value and the year. So first of all, you can see that this is not updated yet. So what you would want to do is you'll want to hit refresh on your browser. And now when you stand and you look at this event, you'll have the second parameter that you added. You can see that this one is not mapped. So we're gonna map it. And again, what we're going to map over here would be the year, okay, uh, instead of zero, we're gonna have, again, the current index. So this thing over here. So if you just drag and drop it, you'll see how to get it over here. You can remove it, put it in here. And this is what we're going to pass over as the year. All right, so now if we go over and we add something, Hello, now we got hello and undefined because we don't have years. So if we now have two years, that's fine. And then if we go over and we uh, change this to fish, now here's the values from this record being passed over. So this is how you can add additional values from the row um, into the event for each one of those input text components.